Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Circle Direct Podcast. I remain your host, Dr. Tewa, and today we're going to talk about a painful but yet common condition that affects millions of people worldwide, and that is kidney stones. Today, we're going to look at how they form, the risk factors, the symptoms, and how we can prevent and treat them. So if you know someone that has suffered from this condition, or you yourself has experienced kidney stones, or you're simply curious about what they entail, Stick around to learn everything you need to know about this condition. So what are kidney stones? So a kidney stone is a hard deposit made up of minerals and salts that form inside the kidneys. Now these stones may vary in size from sand, pebbles or as large as a golf ball. In some cases, kidney stones are mostly made up of calcium oxalate and also consists of uric acid, struvite, or cysteine, depending on the underlying cause. Stones from when these substances are stated above, like calcium oxalate and uric acid, become concentrated in the urine over time because they would crystallize and stick together. While the kidneys, if they are usually doing their function, filter out these waste products from the blood and excrete them through the urine, When the balance of the fluid, salts, and minerals are off, the kidney stones can develop. Now, these kidney stones form in stages. The process begins when the urine becomes super saturated with stone-forming substances like the calcium oxalate and the uric acid that has been stated before. This can happen if there is not enough water to dilute these substances and the concentration of these compounds are high, especially if you have a sodium rich diet or a high protein diet or a diet that is rich in these substances that are formed in super saturated urine metabolism and genetics are also factors that can come into play next these concentrated particles begin to crystallize over time they start attaching to the lining of the kidneys and the urinary tract forming a small stone now if these stones remain small they may pass unnoticed through the urinary tract. But if they grow larger, they can become lodged in the kidney or ureta, causing intense pain and unsavory symptoms. Now, for risk factors for kidney stones, several factors can increase your risk of developing kidney stones. First of all, dehydration. The most common risk factor for kidney stones is not drinking enough water. When you are dehydrated, your urine becomes more concentrated. You start noticing that your urine goes from clear, which is the normal urine color, to a dark orange tinge. That is usually a sign of dehydration. That can increase your chances of crystal formation. Secondly, a diet that is rich in sodium, protein, or oxalate, such as spinach and nuts, can elevate the risk of kidney stones. Now, these high sodium levels can cause the kidneys to excrete more calcium, contributing to calcium stone formation. Thirdly, obesity. Being overweight or obese changes how your body would process certain substances. Medical conditions also is a risk factor that should be taken into account. Conditions like hyperparathyroidism, gout, or having recurrent urinary tract infections increase your risk of stone formation. Family history. Genetics also play a role. If you have a close family member that has kidney stones, your risk of developing kidney stones yourself increases. So understanding these risk factors is very key in preventing the formation of kidney stones. Now, what are the symptoms that we should look out for when we're talking about kidney stones? The main symptom when it comes to kidney stones is severe pain, typically starting when the stone moves into the ureter, the ureter being a tube that connects the kidneys to the urinary bladder. The pain is often described as one of the worst types of pain imaginable, usually radiating from your lower back to the side into your abdomen or your groin. Other symptoms that exist in kidney stones include pain during urination, hematuria, that's if the stones start to move across the ureter, they can cause streaks of blood to appear in your urine. Frequent urination can also occur because the stone can irritate your urinary bladder to have the feel or the urge to urinate. 
you can also experience what is called difficulty passing urine or straining during urine called strain area now there's also another symptom called fever and chills usually when fever and chills are existing in this condition then an infection process or an infectious process has begun because the stone can be lodged in your ureter causing a blockage in urine flow and a blockage in urine flow is a site for infections to occur now what is the treatment for kidney stones the treatment of kidney stones usually depends on the various factors first off the size second the type of stone and thirdly the severity of the symptoms for small stones the best approach is often to stay hydrated and wait for the stone to pass through excretion or urination drinking lots of water would help out help flush out the stone now over-the-counter pain relievers can also help with any painful discomfort that you might feel during that process your healthcare provider may also prescribe medications to relax the muscle of your ureter making it easier for you to pass urine now for larger stones or stones that are causing complications medical intervention is necessary and these medical interventions include first extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy this non-invasive treatment uses sound waves to break up large stones into smaller bits before they are passed out through urination we have another process called uretoscopy in this procedure a thin tube is inserted into the ureter and bladder to locate and remove the stone then we also have a percutaneous nephrolithotomy it's in the name percutaneous percutaneous means through the skin and a nephrolithotomy means into the kidney now if for very large stones a small incision will now be made on the back to remove the stone directly from the kidney in cases where the stone is causing an infection or blocking the urine flow immediate treatment is required to prevent permanent kidney damage now moving on to prevention what are the modules that we can do to make sure that kidney stones are not formed in us in the first place the main one is to stay hydrated drinking enough water is the best way to prevent stones from forming and in our climate that is mostly humid and hot two to three liters of water is the best in terms of drinking water per day secondly modifying your diet reduce salt intake animal protein you also have to increase your intake in f of fruits and vegetables so that you can keep your urine less acidic and reduce your chances of stone formation medications can also help so if you are prone to recurrent kidney stones or you have recurrent urinary tract infections your doctor your healthcare provider may prescribe medications like thiazide diuretics or potassium citrate that can help prevent new stones from forming now in totality by maintaining a good hydration and also being considerate and making conscious dietary choices you can reduce your risk of developing kidney stones in the future so in conclusion kidney stones are common but they are preventable and very treatable as long as you follow the modules in terms of prevention by staying hydrated making conscious dietary choices and if need be reaching out to your healthcare provider to help out with any medications that would help you in terms of managing the condition. Now, your chances of developing this painful condition can depend on various other factors, but even if it occurs, you should understand that it is very treatable. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Circle Direct Podcast. I remain your host, Dr. Tiwa, and if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment sections below. We would be glad to get through them and answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much and I'll see you some other time.